It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, Could you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the neighborhood. It's good to be with you on Wednesday. I'm glad that you're here. It's good to spend this time with you. There's no other place that we'd rather you be than right here with us. Special guest today and a, and a wonderful introduction, our new vicar, Danny, is with us today on our Wednesday devotion, and she's going to spend a little time with us and, and uh, share some of her faith story with us and, and give us an insight into into her faith journey. And we're excited about that. And, and as our year unfolds, uh, you'll be seeing her on the Wednesday devotions as well. So we're thankful for her and her time with us. And we're thankful for all of you and for your support and for so many encouraging words. Please know that, that we, are, uh, we are profoundly humbled and grateful for that. You, you don't know how much an encouraging word uh, means it goes a long way and, um, and and certainly share those encouraging words with one another So as we always do when we gather together we do so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen Evil wants us to think the worst about who we are So that we would have that behind our eyes as we looked at our neighbor and we would see the worst in them But Jesus wants us to see the best of who we are so we would have that behind our eyes as we looked at our neighbor and we would see the best in our neighbor, Jesus reminds us that we are lovable and that our neighbor is lovable too. Oh God, your kindness and your love wash over us. You see our true selves and all else falls away. We give thanks for you, O oh God, and we seek from you this day to make this world your neighborhood and to be loving neighbors to all. Amen. So our scripture for today is a, a brief one. It's a verse, but it's a powerful verse, and it's one that, that I like. Um, it's one that um, uh, I think about often, and I think about how I would answer it. And if someone were to ask me a powerful verse, this would be one of them. And it comes from the Old Testament book of Micah. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with God? Our reading for the day. Thanks be to God. So, Danny, as we think about uh, our time together and, and as you share with us uh, your faith journey, could you tell us what is your favorite Bible story? My favorite Bible story is actually an entire book. It is the book of Esther. Okay. Um, it's my favorite for a lot of reasons. Um, a personal one is that um, when I first started attending church, I was invited to join a women's Bible study and they were studying Esther. Um, so for me, this was like my first real taste of the Bible. Um, I love Esther because um, I find it to be very, very real. Um, there's drama and conflict and real broken people in that story. 
Um, and God shows up in Esther by um, empowering her to use her God-given gifts to show up and, and be there for her people um, and to um, stand up for what she believes in and to protect her family. Um, so I like that very, very much. And I think what what impacted me most when I was in this Bible study, it was 17 or 18, very new to my faith. And what was interesting was God, like the name God is not actually ever in that story. And I was like, why is it even in the, in the Bible? But I looked at my own life, not really ever having a vocabulary to talk about God with, because I didn't have that growing up. And I, I don't know, I sort of found myself in, in the story that way to say, like, God has been with Esther this whole time in the same way that God has been showing up in my own life. Um, only now do I have, the, like I said, the vocabulary to, um, to speak in, in those ways. That's powerful. Thank you. Okay. If you could give us one takeaway from the book of Esther... And it sounds like you've alluded to it, but if you could give us one takeaway from the book of Esther, what would it be? My favorite verse from, from the book of Esther is from chapter 4, for such a time as this, um, that we don't know what that time is, but that God has given us these gifts that we are all equipped for such this time. Um, because God is faithful to us and God shows up for us um, in our lives. And so for me, that's, that's the major takeaway. That's been my sort of my grounding and my, my guiding verse for me on my own faith journey is that um, because I didn't grow up in the church, um, this whole idea of, of being called <laughs> was for me very much out of the blue. Um, and I was like, God, are you, are you sure? Me, I, you know, this is not, I, I've not had experiences that maybe some cradle Lutherans have had. And, and in my mind, I'm like, there are far more qualified people to pursue a call than, than I am. Um, but I feel like um, that for such a time as this, I don't know what that time is. God does, um, and God has equipped me for, for this ministry. Thank you. Yeah. That's exciting. We'll look, we'll look forward to hearing more of that and more of your story as it unfolds uh, with us. It's powerful words for those of you who are watching us wherever you might be to think about God, God calls you and God will equip you wherever God needs you to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So what's something that, that uh, we don't know about you that, that uh, interesting or maybe unusual or something that uh, that you'd like to share with us? What's one thing that we should know about you? Hmm. I'm an only child. It's kind of a, a boring thing, but um, and, uh, something that other people kind of think is weird, especially being from Wisconsin, is that I don't like brats. I've been told that that's very um, un-American and um, un, un Wisconsin of me, but I just, I can't get behind the brat. But she does root for the Packers. Go Pack Go. There you go. See, <laughs> everything else has been washed away by that. Okay. So, so you don't like bronze, but that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. See, more that we're learning. And uh, as the year unfolds, uh, you'll get to, to talk with Danny more and um, interact with her and hear more of her faith story. And uh, uh, maybe she'll tell us more about the book of Esther. You ask her about it, and uh, it, she has a real passion for it, so I, I suspect that uh, she would share that with you. Thank you. Yeah. So the last thing I wanted to do, I wanted to bring us back full circle to our, to our uh, uh, verse from Micah. But to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God, which is what God asks of all of us. So I wonder, what might doing justice look like for you? Mm -hmm. Doing justice um, for me means that we look out for, for the least of these. Um, I, when I think of justice, like gospel justice, um, it doesn't return harm with harm, it returns harm with good. Um, and I think that that's very much tied to even um, our opening um, 
about what it means to be neighborly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And what might loving kindness look like to you? Loving the person in front of you <laughs> for who they are. Um, yeah, we don't we don't know what the, or yeah what the people that we encounter uh, day to day go through. There's more to their story than we'll ever know, and only God knows that part of their story. Um, and so, being able to meet people where they're at for who they are is really powerful. And um, if we can do that in a way that's authentic and and loving, um, and then. If I can skip ahead to the mm -hmm. walking humbly, is that we do that, <laughs> we do that because we're called to, not because our egos need it or because you know we need to feel good, but because because you just should. We're called to do that. Nice. And there you go. Body of Christ at Emmanuel. That's our teaser. That's the beginning of uh, of a conversation that will continue for the weeks to come. I might ask you, how would you answer those questions if you were to, to think about uh, doing justice and loving kindness and walking humbly with God? We'd love to hear uh, from you how you might do that and uh, at the very least uh, pray about that this day and, and, and think in your own mind uh, how you might answer that. So with that, let us pray. Oh, good and gracious God, for another day and for having brought us in safety through the night, we give you thanks. We pray that your holy angels would watch over us, keep us safe from every harm and danger, that, that the wicked one would have no power over us. We give you thanks for all of the powerful people who have loved us into being, who have been part of our faith story, and who have, uh, who have encouraged us and empowered us. We ask your blessings upon Vicar Danny and her internship year, her learning and her sharing and and for us to be a gracious and understanding congregation to know that we are learning together, that your spirit calls us each and every day to new things, enlightens us and calls us as it always has with the church on earth. We pray for so many both near and across the miles you have, you at home watching have shared with us your prayer request and and you have shared your joys and your concerns. You have shared your own struggles, your own wrestlings. And we pray that you find the peace that you need. We pray that you find your own ways to walk humbly with God and allow God to walk boldly with you. That everything that we do should build up the body of Christ. Everything that we do should speak well of our neighbors, and everything that we do should be about God's kingdom of heaven on earth and its unveiling. So we continue to pray for our neighbors, both near and across the miles. We pray for good health. We pray for all the essential workers. We pray for people who, who care for us and who love us into being. We pray for this place. And give you thanks for all of the, the wonderful treasures of time and talents and gifts and encouraging words. Thank you, God. We thank you for your people in this place. Give us the ability to serve you and to serve one another. That everything that we do is for our good and for your glory. So for these things and whatever else that you see that we need, we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. When our faith is weak, Lord, teach us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven. And when we are inclined to forget about you, Lord, teach us to pray, hallowed be thy name. And when we feel pessimistic about our lives and about the state of the world, Lord, teach us to pray, thy kingdom come. And when we have difficult decisions to make and are tempted to take the easy way out, Lord, teach us to pray, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And when we complain about little upsets and forget that millions of people are poor and hungry, Lord, teach us to pray. Give us this day our daily bread. And when we are worried about our sins and find it hard to forgive those who sin against us, Lord, teach us to pray. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And when we are troubled by temptation, Lord, teach us to pray. 
Lead us not into temptation. And when we find it hard to cope, Lord, teach us to pray, but deliver us from evil. And when we are preoccupied with ourselves and our own glory, Lord, teach us to pray. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It is a neighborly day in this beauty wood and a neighborly day for a beauty. Won't you be mine? So, beloved in Christ, body of Christ and Emmanuel, brothers and sisters, let's make the most of this beautiful day. And since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Again, we thank you for spending this time with us and we look forward to, to doing this more often. Again, you're invited to worship with us Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. You can bring your lawn chair and sit outside or you can sit in your car. Uh, 87.9 on the FM dial and number one in your hearts uh, is our tagline and we are happy to, that that is catching on. And certainly you're always able to find us online uh, through the, the platforms that we've been using. So we continue to pray for you and we ask that you pray for us and we lift one another up. Be gracious, be patient with one another, hold each other gently in, in your hands and uh, ask that people do the same for you. As always, we thank you for listening. We thank you for watching. Tell someone this week that Jesus loves them and invite someone to worship with you next week at the big church on the corner. Go in peace because Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. It's you I like. It's not the things you wear. It's not the way you do your hair, but it's you I like. The way you are right now, the way down deep inside you. Not the things that hide you, not your toys, they're just beside you. But it's you I like. Every part of you, your skin, your eyes, your feelings, whether old or new, I hope that you'll remember, even when you're feeling blue, that it's you I like, it's you yourself, it's you, it's you. It's you I like, it's you yourself, it's you, it's you.